Uh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Heavenly Father, we just we thank you so much for your worship songs that we got to sing, Lord. That you lift us up and encourage us today <coughs> on your words. May scripture become etched on our hearts as you want it to be. That it's a way of walking, not of just talking, Lord. That you bind the devil from being here today and dispatch your angels to hang out with us, Lord. Lift us up, encourage us up, and bless us up. In Jesus' precious name, okay. amen. 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 So, some people have been talking to me about faith lately. So, God said, uh, I'll give you some inspiration with faith. First thing about faith is, do you want to walk in faith, or do you want to walk in fear? What You know, I don't pick the songs. I come here and I just pick whatever it seems to be, and then it works out. What incredible, right? I no longer walk in fear, right? And then I vibrate all the way home, <laughs> right? Because I give it all up, right? But faith is so strong. The first thing we have to realize is that faith comes from God, not from us or our works. Although our faith can build, be stronger from God when we really use our faith. So he'll give us examples today of what to do, right? Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. What I want to hear is the facts. I want the truth. I don't want maybes, kind of, okays, it sounds like this. The Bible gives us straight up, straight words, straight facts. The fact is, faith comes from hearing. What do I hear? I hear the Word of God. Hebrews 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So I want to say that again with a couple of other words in there. Now faith is the substance, substance being the realization of things hoped for, the evidence Evidence meaning the confidence of things not seen. I believe it even though I don't see it. But yet I can see it if I believe it. And the belief is that my life has changed in so many ways because I have faith that what is told to me out of the Bible is true. I stand on those facts. 1 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 9. Holding the mystery of faith with pure conscience. Right? Pure conscience. I don't let other things, worldly things, my personal opinions float into what God says about something. Faith is the un... Is the unveiling in the mind. When I have faith, God allows me to understand this scripture to the way that I need to understand it at that time. The facts of Christ, his being truly man and truly God, I believe that. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit, he's in me. The unity of all. Everybody's welcome. The truth in the word. Revelation in, of sin, nature, and the truth of the rapture. I believe those. I have faith that that's true. I have no proof that that's true. I have faith that that's true. And when I have that faith, it builds up stronger. Faith is a gift from God. Can't earn it can't buy it, you can't have more because I did better things than you, it's just something God fills you with. And he fills it with the actions of your heart. He knows your heart. So if your heart's wavering on the faith of, he will get me out of jail, maybe, then his faith will allow you to sit in that thought. 
But if my faith is that I know I may be revived from this or even get a longer sentence, but whatever it is, is okay because that's what God wants me to have. There's faith. He gives us a story in Mark chapter 5. Verse 25. 25 through 34. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from her physicians. She had spent all that she had with no better, but rather grew worse. So here she is, she was bleeding, and she's going to the doctors, and they're trying stuff on her, and it ain't getting any better. It's just getting worse. But her faith was in the doctors. Her faith was in that they could fix her. The faith is that the world can do something even though it's unfixable. Now they think maybe she had a tumor or she had some kind of infection inside her that just nobody could figure out and make this go away in the time that she lived in. When she heard hearing the word of God, when she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. Right? She just went. She just touched it. She just touched it. Now, I, you know, me and my wife went out to New York City for a celebration of the Statue of Liberty back in 86 or something. And we were in crowds like this. So if the crowd went like this, you went like that. That's how close we were. If it went this way, you went that way. If everybody decided to move, you all moved, right? He was in a crowd like that and felt someone touch his tassel. He felt that on his garment. For she said, if I only may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Just touch his clothes. Her faith was so, so, if I just touch his clothes, I'll be healed. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed from the affliction. affliction sorry. Healed instantly. Because she knew if she just believed, if she could just touch him. Here he is, he's marching through a crowd. They're all rubbed up against him. He's done a couple other healings. He's done a couple other miracles. And this, this woman's like sneaking up and just, just let me touch him. Right? How powerful is that to God if you know that if I just invoke his name, my life will change. But hang on to that thought. <clears throat> Here's what happened with her. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? You think he didn't know? You think he needed to ask who it was? But he did need to ask so that she would stand up and say, It was me. Right? Are you willing to say, It's me? I'm here. I'm asking for you to touch me. Heal me. But he, his disciples said to him, You are seeing the multitude thronging you, and you say, Who touched me? And he looked around to see who he looked around to see her. See, he looked around to see her. He knew it was her who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed in your affliction. Awesome. That's what faith does. Except unless you weren't supposed to be healed. I have cancer. Heal me, Lord. He says, not, that's not what I have in store for you. I have something else in store for you. Faith is, okay, I know that's what God wants for me. I'm okay with that answer. Get my child off drugs. He's got to make that commitment himself. 
My faith is that no matter what happens, God has his hands on them. Then I go home and I rest in my faith. Not. <laughs> then I go home and make a maniac out of myself and my child by trying to get him in someplace he don't want to go. There's no faith in that. Where is my faith? Where does it sit? James chapter 2, verse 18. But some of them will say you have, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without works and I will show you my faith by works. So, I like to use this one as an example. Mark chapter 9, verse 41. Whoever gives you a cup of water to drink in my name because you belong to Christ, assuredly, I say to you, he will be no, by no means lose his reward. He's not going to lose his place in heaven because he's out there doing it in the name of God. What am I doing this for? Do I have this place open up because I'm the great guy? I'm here because you guys know I don't want to be here. <laughs> I'd rather be in Florida. But I know this is where God wants me. And then in that, we get to have the blessing of last night. We have the, the blessing of someone who's in trouble to be able to come here and get relief because we give them that glass of water in the name of Jesus. We get to pray with them in the name of Jesus. We do it in the name of Jesus. But it... What he's saying here is if you just do, well, I seen a guy that was thirsty, so I gave him water. Why? Because I'm a good guy. I'm supposed to give him water. God says I should give him water. That's what it says. God says I should do that. Yes, but not in your name. Is your faith in your name? Are you doing it because you're supposed to do it, or are you doing it because that's the walk of Jesus? That's what I'm supposed to do. Get on your knees and pray. How about walking around in life on your knees? That doesn't mean physically be on your knees, but be humble all the time. No argument. Just total blessing. There's something that I need to talk to you about. I want to bring it to you in peace. God doesn't bring it to us in commands and demands and you're going to hell for this. Do I give that to someone else? I don't when I want my kid to go someplace. But when I walk in faith that God's in charge of it, here you go. Me and Bob got to go to the jail last night. Man, what a meeting we had. Incredible. I was in there four hours yesterday. Four hours in the jail with as many guys that I could possibly see that God placed there. And they all just loved hearing about Jesus. Are you kidding me? I got to go do that. God used me for his purpose. Or was I there because Pastor Chris is pretty good? Well, then I would have just said junk. Right? I would, I'd probably be selling drugs out the back of the church. We could have quite a circle going on here. <laughs> right? We'd have lots of money. Right? No. What does God want? He wants me to stand firm on his word. Act in his word. Live in his word. Walk humble in his word. That's faith. Because I believe that that's what he wants. Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. So Jesus said to them, Because of your unbelief, right, doing it in my name and not his name, for assuredly I will say to you, if you have of a must if you have faith of a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here into there, and it will have moved, and nothing will be impossible for you. Nothing would be impossible to you, to me, to any human being that's willing to listen to this. If I say, Lord, remove the desire of drugs from me, he will, if I'm faithful into that. But if I'm going to waver, I can't fall into his faith because I constantly fall back into my flesh. And my flesh says that that's not really true. 
So I stay stuck out of it because I don't have the faith. Now when I start having the faith that this is true, I get piled on more faith. The more I walk in faith, the more faith I have, the more faith I have, the straighter I walk. And then the rest of the world says, how come you're happy? Your, 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 your son just died. Why could you possibly be happy? Because he's in heaven. Because I trust that God had that plan to happen. It wasn't punishment. It wasn't anything else. It was just what God needed to have at that point in time. How come I'm not healed from the things that... How come I don't have just this total blessing and walk up here and not wanting to be in Florida? Because I like being in the flesh and I would rather be in Florida. I know that. My faith is about being up here. I, sometimes I'm walking up here and I don't want to be here. That's not walking in faith. And when I can walk and then I see, man, what we seen last night is incredible. A room full of people that probably never would have got together. A room full of people for two kids. This woman's two kids knew nothing of this community up here that loved their mother. What a blessing to give them. God gave those two kids that gift and used us to do it. Thank you. Thank you. I always wanted people to say, hey, call Chris up. He can come to us. And they'd call me up. I'd be the guy to go fight, right? So they called me this one time, and I use this a lot. I just one time, had four guys called me up and said, somebody's bought on my sister. We got to go. No problem. I'm coming. It's on the third floor. We're in an apartment house down the lane. I'm up the stairs, boom, kicking the door. Nobody's behind me. <laughs> they all left. I went up there in faith. <laughs> uh, faith of the flesh. But I enjoyed myself there anyways. <laughs> Would I run up the stairs and offer Jesus? Knowing that that's what I'm there for. Even if I'm going with people that may not believe it. Even if I get there, there may be people that don't believe it. Would I take that message into the jail? Would I be willing to, because there's nobody in the jail who wants to hear about Jesus. Are you kidding me? No. Everybody in there wants to hear about Jesus. They just don't know how to get there. And if I have enough faith that God has given me trust to bring his word there, there's nothing I can do wrong as long as I walk in that faith and explain it direct, word for word, verse for verse. This is how your life can change then I have faith, and I follow it. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And if the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved and gave himself for me. Choice of free will right there. I have the choice of free will of living in the destruction of my flesh or walking in the spirit in faith. And it's kind of a 50-50 battle. <laughs> but that's the battle. A spiritual warfare of my flesh wants to take control and the Spirit says quietly, you don't have to do that, there's a way out. But I need to have control, I need to take charge of things. That's what I've been told my whole life. You need to get more educated, charge out there. If you're on the football team, go get everybody, charge on! Until you do that in life and then they say, what are you doing that for? That's what we got to jail for. <laughs> Come on up. My free will says, I want to walk in God. When I go somewhere, I've accepted Jesus Christ into my heart. He lives in me. Do you actually walk around like that? I have people who stand in front of me and swear and go, oh, excuse my language. Don't talk to me. The Holy Spirit's inside you, too. <laughs> talk to him. <laughs> Do you go and do things that are really silly outside what God would want for you in your life? Because he's right there with you. 
You're not hiding from him. He knows. How do you live your life? Is your flesh crucified with Christ and you walk in that by faith because you believe that? You didn't just go hang on a tree. You know you weren't hung on the tree. Do you believe that your flesh was? Your sin life was crushed there. And you can walk in faith over here with everything else that comes up in life. It's all yours. Here it is. Total freedom. Total freedom. They can place all the drugs they want in front of me. I'll call and have it removed. I'm not going there. I have faith that there's nothing in that for me anymore. It's not my flesh wants that, but my mind and my spirit says, that didn't answer anything for me. I have no need of that. Why? Because I have Jesus Christ. Not because I've been away from the drugs for so long. I walk in faith that Christ is greater than that bag of dope. My life has changed. The depression can't overwhelm me because I walk in the faith that Jesus Christ has removed that from me and the devil wants to give it back to me and I ain't taking it. I stand on that. That's faith. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. Any questions? <laughs> right? Any questions? You want to know what faith is? It's given to you by a gift of God. No questions. That's a fact. That's a promise. That's God. John chapter 20, verse 29. Jesus said to him, Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Who's he talking to? Dalton Thomas. Right? I got to see the holes in his hands. I got to see that. Well, we walk around. We don't get to see Thomas. We get to read about Thomas. But we're all Thomas. Is God really going to do that for me? As soon as I say that, I told him to go sit down. I told God, who hung himself on the cross for all my sins, to go sit down because I don't want to believe that. Not very good faith. That ain't even faith of a mustard seed. <laughs> right? And the faith of a mustard seed is the smallest faith that anybody could possibly have, and yet that smallness of faith could get me to stay off drugs, stop staying out all night long, riding stupid on my motorcycle sometimes. <laughs> It can change me from walking in depression and misery because I deserve to have depression and misery. Don't you know my life? I've earned the right to walk around miserable and need drugs for happiness. But that didn't work. Christ did. And I can walk on that. I can stand out on the street corner and scream it from the top of my lungs that I am not on those things because I've accepted Christ into my heart and he has removed that depression that I can willingly bring back any time I choose to. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. Simplest of all. For we walk by faith, not by sight. If I walk by sight, I'm just going to walk around wanting to kill myself and everybody else in the world. But when I walk by faith that Christ has overridden all that on the cross, my sins have been destroyed, so have it yours. If you have an open willingness to really believe that and walk in that, nothing can attack you. But it will. Because we have to remember, there's an adversary to all this faith. And it's Satan. He doesn't want us to believe any of that. And in the process of him not wanting us to believe any of that, he's told everybody that he doesn't really exist. That we believe. 
The devil couldn't have done that to me. Sure he could have. He had someone drop a bag of dope that they didn't even know they did in front of you so that you're going to come out and they're, oh, my God. Hey, no one will know. That thought didn't come from God. I don't go to the beach. Why don't I go to the beach? Because the women down there might as well be naked. And if there's a bunch of naked women down the beach, I don't be, need to be there. <laughs> and if they aren't, I think they are. <laughs> right? So I don't go there. Why? Because I know my flesh has died with Christ and I'm not going to bring it back to life by going there and living in the sin that, of thought. I don't want that in my life. I want peace. I want, and believe me, there's a lot of reasons not to be peaceful. And I do the best I can with what I got. But the more I stay in faith, that Christ will make all the issues in life go away. Go away by allowing me to have peace in the storm. This book, New Testament, is full of nothing but storms and how Christ removed it from everybody. Through faith. Do you walk in faith or do you walk in fear? Do you rule a room by faith or do you rule a room by fear? Love is an overwhelming thing. Most of us have no clue what love really is. <coughs> when we understand love, then we understand the truth of the cross and we, the truth of someone accepting our sins onto their physical body as a man, by the time he got to the cross, the physical flesh being was so destroyed you didn't even know it was a human being. All the crosses that we see with him hanging on it, he did not look like that. They couldn't even tell it was a human when they nailed him to that cross. That wasn't just to show us what he looked like, it's to show us what the grief of carrying all our sins does to the flesh of a human body. That's what it's showing us. Your sin went on his body and burned it. Believe it. Live in that. You may be healed, you may not be healed. Have faith whatever it is that God is allowing that to happen in your life. Accept it. Man, there's peace in that. It's okay because that's what God wants in my life. When I step out into all those other things that the flesh wants, I've given up my crucifixion and gone back to my flesh. I've given up His crucifixion and gone back to my flesh. I've become Doubting Thomas all over again. But my faith is so great and he loves us so much more because we didn't get to see him other than what we get to read. Are we going to go on today? Are we going to walk by faith and not by sight? Man, if you can spend a day, one day, walking by faith. One day. Then you'll get to see what walking in faith is really like. And man, when you grab a hold of it, it's like the first hit. And it's like, yeah, i got to get some more of this, man. Right? I need some more Jesus. Right? You imagine running around, that's all you want to do is some more Jesus. If I could chase that like I chased, I need some more Coke. <laughs> Boy, that was faith. I have faith in the Lord today. I have faith that he'll bring me through anything I'm willing to let him bring me through. The problem is that I'm in the middle. I ask you to walk by faith today and not by sight. Amen? Amen. 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 <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your scripture, Lord, that you have given us direct, physical, spiritual, sightful inspiration in our lives if we choose to have that. Lord. If somebody hasn't received you, let today be the time. Let this be the place, Lord. Just repeat after me quietly in your own heart. You don't even have to say it out loud. Dear Jesus, I know you're the Son of God. Forgive me. Come into my heart and live. I want to know you. With that said, Lord, you know who said that. 
give them the best night's sleep they've ever had. Touch their hearts. Let them know that you are in charge if they're willing to let you be. Lift us all up. Bless us all up. In Jesus' precious name, amen. amen.